Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends, our text for the sermon meditation this morning is that gospel reading we just heard from Luke chapter 12. I want you to listen again to verses 22 and 32. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, once upon a time, a real time, mind you, not an imagined one, there was a wolf. And he was a mean, fat old thing. This wolf had it pretty easy. Whenever he wanted to eat, all this wolf had to do was stick his head out of the door of his wolf cave, look at the sheep, feeding and grazing outside, and then as he eyed this one or that one, he'd take his pick. And with a a rather minimal struggle, with very little effort, he would take down the sheep and eat to his heart's content. The more this wolf ate, the bigger he got. And the bigger he grew, the hungrier he became. He was a wicked old thing. Sometimes, just to mess with the sheep, he would poke his head out not to eat, but just to howl and watch them all tuck their tails and run for the hills. Whenever he did, the wolf would chuckle to himself in his evilness, and he'd mutter under his breath, yes, you better be afraid, you stupid sheep. One of these days, I'm going to eat you too, and it won't be pleasant. This big bad wolf had a name, a name of fear. The sheep only had to think of his name, they only had to hear his name, and their little sheep knees would become wobbly. Some of them would faint just hearing the name of the wolf. His name was Death. And Death was always hungry, never satisfied. Always eating sheep, always wanting more. He's awful. To top it all off, he stank. The very smell of him was worse than the name, worse than his howl. He was altogether dreadful, let me tell you. But death was in charge, and all the sheep knew it. Now there came a day when this old wolf was feeling hungrier than usual. He woke up with quite the appetite, and he poked his head out of his wolf cave to roar, and he stopped short because he couldn't believe his eyes. Right there on his doorstep, a mere feet outside of his wolf cave, was the fattest, plumpest, juiciest, tastiest looking sheep he had ever seen. The wolf pulled air into his lungs to let out a wolf howl, and it was a stone-splitting one. All the sheep around the area ran as fast as they could the other way. They were all terrified. All of them, that is, except that plump, juicy, tasty-looking sheep on the doorstep. That sheep paid him no mind at all, just kept right on eating like he hadn't even heard the howl. Well, now the wolf was getting a little mad, and he came bounding out the door right up into the face of the unmoving animal, and again he sucked air into his lungs, and this time he breathed it out right into the face of the sheep. The sheep looked up and blinked at the hideous odor of decay that was blasted into his face, but still seemed totally unconcerned, just staring right into the face of the wolf. Well, at this, the wolf was starting to get himself into a tizzy. Don't you know who I am? He snarled. The sheep looked at him and said, yes, I know. Calm, almost at peace. The other sheep started to creep back at this point from a distance to watch. They couldn't believe what they were witnessing. Well, snarled the wolf, aren't you afraid? The sheep looked death, that old wolf, right in the eyes and chuckled, laughed. (laughs) Afraid of you? Are you kidding? Well, now the wolf was so livid with anger that he could hardly control himself. And with a low, menacing voice, he said clearly to the sheep so that others could hear, 
you're in for it. This is the end, lamb chops. And you're not going to have it easy. I'm going to take you out slow and painful. There was a moment of silence. And the sheep simply responded with that same peace and calm, I know. Now all the other sheep that had been watching, because they'd never heard anything like this before, turned away in this moment. For the wolf pounced, and they hid their eyes. A great sadness filled them. For the other sheep had hoped They just dared to believe that maybe this once the wolf wasn't going to get his way. But their hopes were dashed. It was an awful, ugly sight. The wolf chowed down. It was slow and it was painful, just like he said. And in the end, there was nothing left. The wolf turned his rude, red with blood face to the other sheep and he belched. And they all with tears in their eyes, turned and ran, knowing that he'd be back for them one day soon. With all this, the wolf turned and went back into his cave, taking out a toothpick to clean the lamb out of his teeth. And as he did, he thought to himself that he had never in his life tasted a sheep like this. He'd never tasted a sheep quite so good before. It was tender and rich and really altogether satisfying. This hit him with surprise and scared him a little bit. It was almost as though his insatiable hunger had been quenched for once. The thought was a little disturbing. But no matter, the wolf decided, and off he went to bed. When morning came the next day, the wolf wasn't feeling quite himself. It was almost like he was kind of getting a stomach ache. Such a thing had never happened to the wolf before. He always woke up ravenous and hungry, went off eating a dozen or so sheep before the dew was off the grass. But not this morning. No, this morning his stomach really was grumbling. By noon the wolf felt more than discomfort. He was positively sick. This one who had brought such pain on all the poor sheep was now getting a taste of pain himself. And it was most unpleasant. As he laid there in pain, he kept thinking back to the impertinent sheep that he had eaten yesterday afternoon. The one that had tasted so strangely good. Could it have been poison? Now, it wasn't long before the wolf stopped thinking altogether. The pain was just too great. He rolled around and moaned and howled deep into the night, on the floor of his wolf cave. The sheep heard the sounds and didn't know what to make of it all. They crept cautiously nearer and nearer to the door of the wolf's lair, turning their sheep ears to listen. What could it mean? What was going on? It was some time deep into the dark of night that the wolf let out a shuddering howl. For something he was convinced was alive and moving inside of his belly. Something that pushed and poked and prodded until finally it happened. With a sudden burst, the wolf's belly was punctured and ripped open with a great hole. And something, rather someone, stepped right out through the hole of the wolf. Right out through his now open, stinking stomach. The figure that stepped out of the wolf's belly was completely unknown to him. It almost looked, thought the wolf, like a shepherd. He'd never seen one of those critters, but he'd heard about them. With a staff in his hand, this man, who was indeed a shepherd, walked around and leaned down over the wolf, and he began to laugh. He laughed, and his laughter burst open the door of the wolf's cave. He laughed, and the sheep outside were filled with with bewilderment, wondering what in the heck was going on in there. He laughed, and then he looked the wolf right in the eyes. So you don't recognize me, old foe. It was I, I who ate outside your house three days ago. It was I who you promised would die horribly, and oh, how you kept your promise. But what exactly do you propose to do about me now? The wolf gasped 
you. The voice was the same. He recognized it. This shepherd was indeed that sheep whom he had swallowed down. You, but, but how, the wolf said, howling in pain. The shepherd smiled and said, Well, I think you're pretty harmless now, old foe. Go ahead and try to eat my sheep. I promise you that as fast as you eat them down, I will lead them right out through that hole that I've ripped in your stomach and then you'll never be able to touch them again. The wolf howled in fear and anger and rage, but there was nothing he could do. The shepherd had won, tricked him, fooled him good, and with one last bit of laughter, the shepherd turned and stepped outside the door and called all of the sheep together. They knew his voice too, for they'd also heard it before. And the sheep stood before this lamb who had become their shepherd, and they listened as he told them what would happen. You too will die, he said. The old wolf will come back out in a few days, and he'll be hungrier than ever. He'll swallow you down. But don't worry. Have no fear, little flock. For I punched a hole right through his belly, and I promise that I'll bring you out again. Dear friends, Jesus says to us today in Luke chapter 12, repeatedly, a couple of times in a couple of ways, do not be anxious about your life. Do not worry. It's a hard thing to hear, for there is a lot to be anxious about. I don't need to tell you. You're well aware. We're anxious and worried about normal, everyday stuff. You know, bills, taxes, appointments, deadlines work, school starting. And we're anxious and worried pretty much every day from even bigger stuff, like mass shootings, terrorism, cancer, health concerns, and yes, of course, ultimately, death. In the face of all of these troubles, in the face of the worries of this world, in the face even of death, Jesus calls his sheep together. And he says to you, do not be anxious. Do not worry. He says to you today in Luke 12, what the heck has your worrying and your fretting and your anxiety done to add anything to your life in the end after all? What can you do? Has it added one more second to your life? No. No. No, Jesus says, instead, be like the birds of the air, like the flowers of the field. Fear, love, and trust in your heavenly Father. Fear not, little flock. Rejoice, O you of little faith. For Jesus says, it is the Father's good pleasure to give to you the kingdom. And he has. He's given you the kingdom. Just like we watched him do with little Dominic this morning. Salvation is yours. Forgiveness has been promised, spoken to you, given to you week in and week out in this place. So Jesus says, fear not. Instead, rejoice. Take comfort in his resurrection. Today we take comfort as we taste the victory. As today we feast on the very body and blood of that Lamb of God who was swallowed by the wolf but who has burst death's stomach. So, dear friends, indeed rejoice. Do not be anxious. Fear not, little flock, for the victory, the victory that nothing can take away, that moth and thief can't destroy or ruin, that victory, that salvation, is yours in him. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all understanding, may it guard and keep you in Christ Jesus, our blessed Lord and our Savior. Amen. Let's stand and join together now in singing the offertory. <laughs>